when you can actually see your profit for the year in, in dollars and cents, you, it, it gets you more in the notion of selling corn, knowing that I can lock in a $50,000 profit or whatever the profit is, you want to lock it in. If I know I can make that much profit in a year, I will be in business next year. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is Wednesday the 8th. We had ethanol production out today, but before we get into that news, let's turn over to the Grain Hedge Trading Platform and see where we closed off the day. Corn mostly unchanged, soybeans trading up a penny on the November contract, and wheat in Chicago down eight and a quarter to 577 on the September contract for Chicago wheat. Now keep in mind there were some headlines that came across the news earlier on. Uh, 240,000 metric tons of new crop soybeans were sold to unknown destinations. That was announced early on in the trade day. That was a nice piece of bullish news. Also some news uh, that Informa dropped their Missouri soybean acres by a million uh, acres here due to planting delays. Now we saw in the crop progress report earlier on on Monday that their harvest pace was only around 72% complete compared to being mostly done during this time of the year. So that little piece of news uh, from Informa, though it wasn't a huge surprise, it did provide another nice piece of bullish news. The other thing that came out in the news today that really wasn't very bullish, in fact, it was a little bit uh, bearish when you look at wheat prices. Egypt bought 180,000 metric tons of Ukrainian and Russian wheat here in the latest tender. Now that tender was issued and um, when you look at Ukrainian uh, wheat offered, it was offered at $202 per metric ton. Russian wheat offered at $202 per metric ton. U.S. wheat offered at $250 per metric ton. So not anywhere close to being competitive unfortunately and something uh, that when you look at the U.S. dollar uh, increasing in value, when you see wheat rally over the last couple of weeks, it just kind of starts to price us out of the market and starts to hurt our overall global competitiveness. That is not a very bullish sign here for wheat uh, going forward. Now let's talk a little bit about export inspections, uh, or, or excuse me, ethanol production. One thing you want to pay attention to that is, is this week's production it was increased by 19,000 barrels per day up to 987,000 barrels per day. So that was very positive. Unfortunately, we did see an increase in ethanol stocks by 309,000 barrels uh, this week to 19.84 million barrels. So those are very, uh, th that's a pretty decent uh, size increase there in ethanol stocks. Uh, but the ethanol production continues to outperform. Take a look at ethanol production here throughout this marketing year. You're going to notice that ethanol production is well above the blue line. That was last year's pace. Look at this, this, uh, this week's bar. It's the bar furthest to the right. It's green. And compare that to the blue line. That's last year during the same period. Uh, you'll notice we're well over last year's level. Last year we were somewhere around 930 uh, that, uh, thousand barrels per day uh, this year uh, well over 980,000 bar barrels per day so very positive and we're above the four-year uh, moving average as well uh, up 4.7 percent in terms of production year over year so very positive uh, strong demand there for ethanol uh, and for corn now let's talk a little bit about tomorrow of course export sales will be released out early on in the trade analysts are expecting to see for old crop between 400 and 600 thousand metric tons for soybeans anywhere from cancellations of 40 thousand metric tons to export sales of 200 uh, thousand metric tons and of course wheat anywhere between 300 to 500 thousand metric tons of sales when we look at new crop analysts are expecting for corn between 200 to 350 thousand metric tons and between 100,000 and 300,000 metric tons of new crop export sales. Let's talk a little bit about the WASDE report. We're gonna go into more detail about analyst expectations here, but let's talk a little bit just about yield uh, for this new crop, uh, for this 2015, 2016 uh, crop. One thing you're gonna notice is with the Reuters poll that came out today, you'll, you'll notice analysts are expecting a decrease in yield here from 166.8 in the June WASDE report. Uh, they're expecting to see 165.4 uh, corn uh, yield uh, this year in the July WASDE report. So 
uh, shedding a little over uh, one uh, bushel per acre. And soybeans here going from uh, uh, 46 uh, well bushels per acre down to 45. So there is anticipation to see a, a decrease in overall production. That's going to impact ending stocks here. We're going to talk more about the expectations for that Friday report in tomorrow's show. So do stay tuned. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, please give the office a call. The number is 877-472-4607. And do remember that there is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options and that it's not appropriate for all investors. So it's something that you should talk to us about. It's definitely something that you should consider before you open a futures trading account. But if you are a producer out there, uh, there is benefits to having uh, to having a futures trading account. Uh, but of course, like I said, there are also risks that come along with it. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you here Thursday for the Export Sales Report.